the first thing that I would like to go and talk about is going to be regarding the Powerpuff Girls. And uh, I understand that for many people, they're always a little iffy when it comes to reboots, uh, especially with the Powerpuff Girls, considering that uh, they had recently gotten a bit of a... Um, Okay, maybe this is a bit of an extreme term, but a traumatic experience with the 2016 reboot? Not, not to say that it was offensive or, like, the worst thing ever, but it's just, um, let's just say it's one of the reasons why you see many people not trusting animated reboots nowadays. Uh, but yeah, essentially, uh, like, whenever you would hear the Powerpuff Girls coming back to television, it's not necessarily a news that even fans would be excited about it. Like, everybody would be a bit on edge and a little bit unease. However, it looks like, uh, the Powerpuff Girls want to have another shot to go and have a reboot, but in this case here, it's going to be a little bit more different than you would expect. Number one being the fact that it's not going to be animated. Yes, it is true, folks. The Powerpuff Girls is going to be coming back on television in live action. In other words, we are indeed getting a live action reboot series of the Powerpuff Girls, and this is going to be brought to us by The CW. Uh, and the funny thing with the CW is that they have a bit of a niche with uh, taking some popular properties and try to go and make them a little bit more different, a little bit more risque, more adult, more edgy, in a sense. And this is no different with what they want to do with this Powerpuff Girls reboot. Now, I'm going to go and read from my source here on Variety, in which uh, it states over here... Uh, in the updated version of the series, the titular superheroes are now disillusioned 20-somethings who resent having lost their childhood to crime fighting. Will they agree to reunite now that the world needs them more than ever? And uh, we already got a few people that are going to be in charge of the project, some people that are, that are going to be working on this. Um, we do have writers and executive producers Heather Reg uh, Regne Regnier? Heather Regnier, and Diablo Cody, on top of a few other executive producers as well, including uh, Greg Berlanti, Sa uh, Sarah she uh, Shester, and David Madden, who are going to be working on this uh, project. And uh, so far, that seems to be the only thing that we really know with this uh, project in particular. It has only been announced so far. We don't have um, any news regarding who's going to be among the cast. We don't know a release date or anything like that. We just know that when it comes to uh, the Powerpuff Girls reboot, it's going to be coming on the CW, and that's it. And... Currently, they're just working on that, so chances are we don't know if we're going to be seeing this uh, sometime, like, maybe much later in either 2022 or 2023, uh, depending if uh, the pandemic can ease down during that time, because you never know. But anyways, going back with this news, I will admit that I remember when I first saw this news, like, when it first popped up, I looked at this and I thought, like, no... No, this can't be. I mean, like, at first, it sounds like, uh, it sounds like an idea that's just absolutely stupid. And it's almost something like, you would expect this to be some kind of parody on Saturday Night Live. Like, with the amount of, like, edgy, dark, gritty cartoon reboots that they are trying to do, or, like, live-action reboots based on cartoons that they are trying to do. Like, you would expect something like this would come out of something like, uh, either as a robot chicken sketch or something from Saturday Night Live that they would do. It sounds absolutely ridiculous because in a way, well, uh, like I I'm just going to say right now, like technically they did not state that it is going to be a dark gritty Powerpuff Girls reboot. It's just from the sound of um, the plot line and the fact that it is coming from the CW that makes it sound like dark and gritty. It, like honestly, I look at this and it feels like it's the Powerpuff Girls with the mentality of Zack Snyder from from last week like you you may remember last week when Zack Snyder uh attacked this one film critic which pretty much 
open the floodgates for his fans to go and attack that that crit to, to attack that critic as well and then Z because Zack Snyder said like well the, my movie isn't going to be your typical Saturday morning cartoon this thing is going to be for grown ups and that's what it feels like with this Powerpuff Girls reboot with what they're trying to do it's a Powerpuff Girls reboot for grown ups this is going to be the dark and edgy one that adults are going to like it's not going to be like the stupid kitty version that's all cartoony and stuff. We're doing it for the adults. This is dark and edgy. You know, like that kind of crap. So that's why at first, it really does sound absolutely stupid. And especially the fact that you're taking the freaking Powerpuff Girls and try to make it dark and edgy and make the girls themselves adults. Like, it's honestly pretty hard to imagine how you're going to take that and try to make it more dark and uh, more mature at the same time. Especially, like, when you do think of the roster of villains, a lot of them, you gotta admit, they are pretty goofy. Like, I, I, will, I, I will admit that there are some that you can imagine that they can have, like, a good dark adult twist to them. Like, rather it be uh, the Gang Green Gang or Sedusa or maybe a princess as well. But then, like, you would also get some, like, like, fuzzy lumpkins, and especially the main villain, Mojo Jojo. Like, you realize this is a show in which the main villain is actually this green monkey with a giant brain. Like, how the fridge are you gonna take that seriously? I don't know, I feel like it, it's gonna be pretty tough to do. Now, this is not to say that you can't take Mojo Jojo seriously, but it's more in the context of the Powerpuff Girls where, like, often it can be more comical and lighthearted, but if you're expecting me to take something like Mojo Jojo very seriously, I don't know, good luck with that. You need to really put in a lot of effort to it. However, with that said, though, I will say that is my initial reaction to it. Now, does that mean that this is going to be hopeless, that this is going to be terrible, and there's no way that this is going to turn out to be good? Honestly, no. There is still that chance, believe it or not, that this could actually turn out to be pretty decently. And honestly, I feel like this is actually stemming from the fact that this is from the CW, in which they actually have a lot of experience doing stuff like this. Not only uh, making superhero series, but also taking cartoon properties and turn them into dark and gritty live action series. Uh, case in point, take a look at Riverdale. Now, in concept, that is probably one of the dumbest things you possibly have ever heard. I mean, keep in mind, we're talking about taking the Archie comics and turn that into a dark gritty series. A, a dark gritty live action series on top of that. How the fridge does that work? I don't know. On paper, that sounds absolutely stupid. I know that some people could argue that technically we did already got Archie's weird mysteries, but even that made a bit more sense than something like River, like, like this Riverdale idea. But in execution it actually proved to be very successful. Now, I know that not everyone loves Riverdale and it does have its haters, but it, it has proven to be a very successful series for the CW with its own prominent fan base. On top of that, uh, they're even expanding upon Riverdale where they even made a spin-off series that actually does connect to that show by making another dark gritty reboot with uh, Sabrina the, T the Teenage Witch. But then... Go and take a look at their superhero reboots. And from there, you'll actually go and find a bit of the same thing where, yeah, you'll see a lot of these superhero shows that, like, some of them can be a bit dark and gritty as well. Maybe not as dark and gritty as, like, what the DCEU is desperately trying to do, but, like, they are more seriously taken than probably some other superhero shows that are out there. And probably the best comparison that I can do with this idea of the Powerpuff Girls reboot is Titans. 
Now, I, I don't know if that is specifically CW, but technically what happened with Titans is very much very similar to the concept that we are hearing right now with this Powerpuff Girls reboot. And um, you might remember way back, like when it was first announced with Titans, that um, in terms of that show, like uh, the, the one thing that we all remember the most about uh, the Teen Titans in general, if it's not the comics, then it's definitely from the animated series, rather it be the 2003 show, or the more or the unfortunately for some more successful Teen Titans Go. And then like you got Titans in which like they decided to go completely 180 compared to Teen Titans Go and take itself so ridiculously seriously where it does feel like it has that similar tone to something like Batman versus Superman Dawn of Justice where it's like it's trying to be so dark and brooding that it's actually hilarious especially with the part in the in the first look where you see Robin like beating someone up and then like he gets up saying Fuck Batman. Oh, Robin just dropped an F-bomb. This is gonna be so serious and so dark and gritty. Oh, Titans is gonna be fresh, y'all. And, and all, you know, that kind of stupid crap. And of course, when that was first revealed, when that was first announced, it did get a significant backlash. And there is some backlash as well into how some of the characters look. I remember back in that time, like even uh, how Starfire looked was a bit controversial as well. However, when that series did come out, um, I wouldn't necessarily say that it was like a masterpiece or anything, but let's just say that the backlash that it received really did cool down and for many people it actually did turn out to be a lot better than expected. So honestly that's kind of the main thing that I feel with this Powerpuff Girls live action dark gritty reboot series is that I understand that at first it could seem like a pretty stupid idea. And I do understand the sentiments of fans that they're not necessarily uh, keen to this idea or they're not necessarily positive to the idea to another reboot, especially after the 2016 reboot. But in this case over here, um, like I feel like the more that I do think about it, the more that I feel like it's best to have a bit of a wait and see attitude because again as stupid as the concept would sound <coughs> Oh, excuse me folks. It is not impossible for this Powerpuff Girls reboot to actually turn out to be good and that this idea might actually be well executed than what many people would believe and for me, I feel like, okay, like, yeah, as dumb as it would sound, and let's be honest, with a lot of the concepts, like, I remember, uh, there was one time, well, th this week, actually, I was on Pelio Steno's, uh, podcast, the POS podcast, and, and I was joined in with, uh, plenty of other people that were there as well, as, as well, not just Paleo, but also, um, uh, Jack, uh, Jack's Blade Fitness, Saber Sparks, and, um, uh, uh, Hiroshi, I believe that's his name, but yeah, I, I was joined in with those boys, and uh, I remember we did talk about it a little bit regarding this Powerpuff Girls reboot, and we actually did talk about, like, the ideas of what they would do with it, and I, I remember one of them actually stated that the more that they would think about, like, the stupid crazy ideas, the more that they would actually be interested in checking it out. And that really is the case. It's like, you think about, oh, what are they going to do? Like, are, are they going to focus on, like, the Powerpuff Girls getting to, into, like, weird relationships? Like, maybe, like, have either Bubbles or Butter Buttercup ended up being in a relationship with one of the gang, Green Gang or something? Or, like, show a dark, like, show some kind of, like, dark origins to some of the villains and stuff like that? Uh, you know, like, all these different possible ideas. And, like, yeah, they sound, uh, they can sound absolutely stupid, but they might lead into something very interesting that could actually work out. So overall, at least with my thoughts, I, like, yeah, I have some serious amount of doubt with this, but I think I'll have to keep it as a wait and see kind of thing because you never know if this could turn out good. And yes, there is a chance that this idea might actually work as crazy as that sounds and as much as people would want to go and give it backlash. So give some time to think about it. Give some, like, give some thoughts about what they could do with some Powerpuff Girl uh, dark remake or something like that. And you'll see that it doesn't sound as stupid as it might sound. So yeah, overall, we'll just have to go and give it a uh, wait and see on this.
Okay, so with that said, I would like to go into the chat wall and I would like to go and ask you all, what do you all think about uh, this CW Powerpuff Girls live action reboot series? Is it something that you guys are very interested in checking out? Do you guys have some very serious doubts on it? Let me know what you all think. Okay, so, um, let's see, uh, what do we have here? Um, I know a YouTuber named Professor Thorgi that said it's best on how to make, uh, oh, that said it best on how to make a dark and edgy remake, and that is you can make a dark remake to a lighthearted show or movie as long as you can keep the characters the same as they were in the original. And that, honestly, that is very true. But I feel like that's going to be a massive obstacle for something like the Powerpuff Girls. Because if you do think about their personalities, they really are lighthearted. Like you got Blossom, who's the more intelligent, responsible leader. You got Bubbles, which, uh, no pun intended, is the bubbly, sweet personality. And then you got Buttercup as well, which, like, yeah, some could say is the easiest to make, to make her dark and edgy because she's already dark and edgy, but then again like even with her personality that she has portrayed uh, like she has a more like you know like a, a more tough like a, a more funny tough attitude that does play more with the comedy uh, and the action as well more so than it is to put in a, a dark edge to it so i feel like that's going to be a massive challenge for the series where you're going to take these light-hearted personalities and try to adapt them onto a dark and gritty show like what they want to do at the CW. Uh, let's see now. Um, you know, I thought um, I, I thought seeing the Powerpuff Girls twerking around. Uh, oh, twerk. Oh yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, you know, I thought seeing the Powerpuff Girls twerking all written by an actual pedophile was the worst Powerpuff Girls related, related thing ever. That is not true, by the way. Those are nothing but allegations, and there is actually no proof that anyone in the uh, 2016 series um, is a pedophile or anything like that. Just need to go and clarify on that. Uh, but after seeing this, that twerking thing is still worse, but this is up there. I've never seen stuff like Teen Wolf or Riverdale, but I don't think that kind of style fits the Powerpuff Girls. Uh, if they are going to go with the more adult-oriented themes, does that mean they're going to bring back Miss Bellum? Ooh. Actually, yeah, that is true, honestly, because, like, this is supposed to be the Powerpuff Girls in the future, and one cool thing they should do, and, like, this is already established by a lot of, fa of fan theories and stuff like that, Miss Bella, honestly, I feel like Miss Bellum should now be the new mayor of Townsville. Like, that would actually be really cool, honestly. Like, as much as I really do love the mayor in the Powerpuff Girls, I mean, like, considering that it is something that will be set in the future, it would make sense if they would have a brand new mayor. And I think Miss Bellum would actually be very much perfect to go and do so. So, so yeah, like, that that would be my, my comment on Miss Bellum. Like, bring her back. Like, yeah, definitely bring her back and give her a stronger role to be, like, the new mayor. That would actually be really cool. And keep her face fit, keep her face hidden as well. Like just, like just keep the voluptuous body, but have no face. Like don't, don't see any of her face at all. That would be like something really cool and a really nice nod to the original show as well. Uh, let's see, what else do we got here? The Powerpuff Girls has been one of my favorite shows as a kid alongside Dexter's Laboratory and Johnny Bravo's Season 1. So where, uh, so when I heard about this, I was shocked about the horrendous results of the reboot, uh, like the whole thing with uh, Bliss, Jared Shapiro, and of course, uh, Miss Bellum getting the axe. Uh, I did not want this. Uh, to Craig Kraken, I said, I'm sorry, I'm truly sorry. And to CW, nice idea, but uh, a la Alec Baldwin in the Cat in a Hat. Nobody likes a suck up, <laughs> but we'll see what happens. Okay, yeah, so yeah, I can, and again, I do understand if you are a fan of the show, like you would, like your heart is definitely in the Powerpuff Girls, and you're definitely gonna be iffy and doubt, doubtful on this. Okay, uh, let's see what else we got here. Okay, so I'm uh, two ways about this. On one hand, I could see this being absolutely bad, but. I think there have been fan fictions who did do similar concepts as this show. Uh, I don't read a lot of them, but I'm sure there have been fanfics of older Powerpuff Girls being bitter about their lives. It's not unrealistic for the girls to grow and feel differently and reflect on their lives. If nothing else, it could be fun, cheesy, uh, shit, uh, shit show that 
takes itself too seriously. Yeah, I, honestly, you do bring up a very good point that um, this I feel like this could be a case where it can go one of two ways. It's a, like it, it's going to be hard to imagine that it's going to be right down in the middle. But as it is right now, like people can pretty much see the two extremes of how this could go. This could either break all expectations and turn out to be quite amazing and a great new take on the Powerpuff Girls, or this could be an absolute disaster. So the, it could go either way, but uh, again, we, we don't know. And you do bring up a good point that technically this is not the first time that someone would think up of the idea of having this dark and gritty Powerpuff Girls reboot uh, featuring like the girls being older and hating their lives and stuff like that. Like it is possible. Uh, let's see. Uh, I will give this, it's not great, but a direct copy of the original, uh, oh, uh, I will give it this, it's not going to be a direct copy of the original and we'll try something new. But I just want a new property because there really isn't any purpose for the Powerpuff, uh, to be the Powerpuff Girls other than nostalgia bait. P.S. My sister hates Riverdale and, uh, just ditched, uh, ditched it to what survivor with the rest of my family, uh, which is an upgrade to me. Okay, that's interesting to know. Yeah, and that is, you know, honestly, that is very true. And that is kind of a good point to ask um, that is against the, this reboot is honestly, like, yeah, you can make some kind of, like, story based on it. Like, technically, the concept alone is fine when you do think about it. But why does it have to be the Powerpuff Girls? You know, that is actually a very good question. Like, yeah, you you know, honestly, you can make a great series based on um, having, like, this superhero kid now all grown up and bitter about his past uh, and then, like, suddenly has to come back. You know, almost a bit like a, a Hancock story. And that's what... And, and essentially, this is, this is what it sounds like, actually. It's like a little bit if you mix the Powerpuff Girls with Hancock in a way. But... And then again, like, you look at this and you have to ask, does it really have to be the Powerpuff Girls? Like, can it not be its own original thing? But then again, some people could say that maybe this is just for the purpose of trying to cash in on nostalgia. So, I don't know. I feel like that is a very good question. But, yeah, unfortunately, I mean, like, it is what it is, unfortunately. All right, I think I'm going to go and read one more comment before we jump into the next story. Uh, call me crazy, but I could see this actually working. The original Powerpuff Girls has a good amount of pretty dark and really violent episodes like Speed Demon, Tough Love, and Bubble Vicious. Um, there, there's even two episodes uh, and the movie where the girls uh, were criticized for all the damage they caused. If they do something with that, this could be rather interesting. Maybe even compare them with child actors like uh, Jake Lloyd. If it turns out bad, uh, at least it can't be as bad as the 2016 reboot. And you know that, you know, as much as the last one is a good argument against this reboot, this is, this comment here is actually a good argument for the reboot because technically it is true that when you do look at the original series, there have been moments where it would go into dark directions actually. And probably one of the, like, it's just recently that I did think about this with this reboot, that technically what it does remind me the most is that one episode where Bubbles decides to go bad and to go highly violent, where she's all hardcore. Like, you remember the hardcore episode where Bubbles is just like, full on pissed off, like just violently beats up all the monsters and Mojo Jojo and even comes out like, the Bubbles Sugar is gone! I'm hardcore now! I feel like that's this whole series in general. That's what it's gonna be. Every episode, all the Powerpuff Girls are gonna come out like as a, adult women going, I'm hardcore now! Oh boy, but yeah. Overall, it is something that we will have to wait and see, and if it turns out great, then great. If not, yeah, well, I mean, I guess it asked for it.